Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. The richest boy in the world needs the help of his new friends to find his parents and get rid of a big enemy. Today we will recap the story of the 1994 film Richie Rich. One cold, wet November morning, Richie, the firstborn son of Regina and Richard Rich, is born. From the day that Richie left the cradle, Herbert, one of the family's butlers, took over as his caretaker. Although Richard needed to spend many hours in his office to manage his vast empire, he always found time to share good times with his son. From a very early age, Richie began to develop an interest in sports, especially baseball. As the years went by, this game became his favorite pastime, but unfortunately he did not have much time to dedicate to this talent. Even though he is very young, Richie is obliged to take on great responsibilities. His father, besides being a businessman, is also a very generous human being. Richard has just bought United Tool, a failing factory that was about to close its doors, and thus managed to save the jobs of hundreds of people. To celebrate, the employees decided to get together to have a re-inauguration of the factory, but since his father is a very busy man, Richie was sent in his place to do the honors. While the young man and his butler are greeted with joy by the union members, some children who were playing baseball on the field nearby look on in amazement at the great privileges of the richest boy in the world. During Diane's speech, Richie comes across the youngsters having fun a few feet away and all he wishes is to be there playing baseball with them. After saying goodbye to everyone who came there to honor him, the boy walks towards the field, but is stopped by Ferguson, his bodyguard. Furious, Herbert orders the man to take his hands off Richie and patiently convinces the young man that they need to leave. When he arrives home, Richie is greeted by his beloved dog, Dollar, and they both proceed to his father's living room. Richard has just returned from a long business trip and gets a big surprise. In the week he has been away, his wife has hired an artist to sculpt the rich family on the mountain that is next to the mansion. At that moment, Herbert has to interrupt the conversation to inform Richard that he has just received a call from the President of the United States. Meanwhile, Richie needs to go to Professor Keenbean's laboratory for his chemistry class. Currently, the scientist is working on his newest invention, the subatomic molecular reorganizer. This machine is capable of reducing waste to its basic molecular components, and then these atoms are recombined to form new products, such as bowling balls. Upon arriving at the lab, Richie asks what else Professor Keenbean is working on, and the scientist introduces the boy to the strongest adhesive in the world. The inventions don't stop there, and now it is Keenbean's turn to present his powerful bulletproof spray. After spraying some of the liquid on a suit, the professor asks his assistant to fire a few shots at the mannequin and proves that his invention works perfectly, as the dummy remains intact. Finally, he introduces Richie to his robot bee, capable of pollinating an entire field faster than hundreds of bees working together. The man explains that that is only a prototype and even then it required an investment of millions of dollars to build. With the remote control in hand, Richie uses the robot to harass Herbert, who, believing it to be an ordinary bee, destroys it with the help of a newspaper wrapping. Seeing his masterpiece in pieces, Professor Keenbean is furious and runs after Richie to account with him. Raffaella, the artist hired by Regina, uses the laser beam to make the last adjustments to the sculpture when she receives new instructions from Mrs. Rich, who asks her to decrease the size of Richard's cheeks. That evening, the family receives an unwelcome visit from Lawrence Van Do, one of Mr. Rich's partners. During dinner, Richie prefers to sit on the other side of the table so he doesn't have to join that man, and Regina says she wishes she could do the same. Although she doesn't like Lawrence, she must attend the business meeting with her husband and accept that demented man as her partner. After all, since he founded his first company, Richard has never fired anyone and is very proud of it. However, when Lawrence tries to convince him to stop the donations he has been making, since they have cost the company over $1 billion in the last year, the woman decides to intervene. Regina and her husband have always made it a point to use their resources to help those in difficulty, and that is why they decided to buy United Tool. However, Lawrence says that getting rid of that factory is the wisest decision to make, since that business will not generate any profit for a long time. Richard agrees to get rid of the factory, but instead of selling it, he intends to give it away for free to the employees to run. Just then, Keenbean shows up and informs us that he has succeeded in developing the machine that he has been working on for several months. The Smell Master is a device that detects the smell of anything. Excited by the novelty, Richie tries out the device and is able to prove its effectiveness. After dinner, the couple escorts their guest out of the mansion, and before they leave, Lawrence advises them to increase their security system. However, Richard states that this will not be necessary, as everything he owns of great value is locked away in the rich family vault. After hearing this, the man leaves intrigued and curious to know where this safe is. The next morning, when Richie's alarm clock goes off, 
Herbert enters the room to wake the boy up, and Claudia shows up to help him practice his morning exercise routine. After a bath, the boy returns to his room and activates the computer's GPS to locate his father. Through a thorough search, the machine reports that Mr. Richard is at the White House, and Richie decides to call him. Hearing his GPS beeping, the man interrupts his conversation with the president to answer Richie's call. However, Richard is embarrassed when he discovers that the boy has interrupted their important meeting just to tell about the appearance of his first pimple. After talking to his father, Richie goes to school, where he meets his classmates. The boy cannot understand why they are all interested only in multiplying their family's money instead of enjoying their childhood. During fencing class, Richie invites his two closest friends to come play at his house for the weekend, but Reynolds and Ellsworth claim that they will be too busy dealing with the family business. Then the spoiled boy starts yelling at the waiter for bringing him cappuccino instead of coffee. In order to teach his classmate a lesson, Richie also attacks his rear, causing him to spill all the drink on his clothes. Later, while returning home, Richie receives the happy news that his Latin class has been postponed, so he would have time to practice an activity of his choice. So he asks the driver to drive to United Tool and, despite Herbert's reservations, the rich family heir asks permission to play baseball with the children. The youngsters then get together to make this decision and decide not to accept the boy in their team. However, everything changes when Richie suggests making a bet and claims to be able to hit the ball far away from there. In his first attempt, the boy barely manages to touch the ball that Gloria threw, but after concentrating hard, Richie successfully hits it, Herbert celebrates the boy's throw and the young man invites those children to his house. However, before he can even finish the invitation, Gloria orders Pee Wee to give the money to Richie Rich, since he has won the bet. Disappointed, the boy refuses the prize and leaves. That weekend, the Rich family is preparing for a trip, in which they will meet the Queen of England. The officials fill the aircraft with various gifts that the couple intends to deliver to the Queen, and Ferguson adds a red box among them. Regina is surprised to find out that her husband intends to give the Smellmaster as a gift to the Queen. But Richard says that she will love the device. Richie is already sitting in the airplane seat when Regina asks Herbert why her son is so sad. The butler then suggests that the boy not go on that trip and take the weekend off to have some fun. Believing this to be the best decision for her son, the woman accepts the suggestion immediately and goes to notify Richie of the news. Seeing all the members of the Rich family on board, Ferguson feels relieved that he has accomplished his mission. That same day, Diane, Gloria's mother, takes the girl and her friends to Richie Rich's mansion, at Herbert's invitation. Upon seeing that gigantic place up close, the youngsters are impressed and are soon greeted with joy by the boy they had kicked out of their game a few days before. Richie is extremely happy to welcome those young people into his home and takes them to make their first stop at the McDonald's that has been built inside the mansion. After they eat, Richie decides to take his new friends to see his personal amusement park, and everyone is happy to be tossed around by the toy nicknamed the Child Thrower. They then go for a quad bike ride while Herbert introduces Diane to the mansion. During the quiet walk, the pair almost get run over by the little rascals, and the butler has to hug the women so that neither of them gets hurt. The adventures around the mansion continue and Richie rests under a tree next to Dollar and Gloria while the other children ride their jet ski on the lake. At the end of the day, the young man takes the group to see the roller coaster he got as a present last Christmas so that everyone will return home with adrenaline running through their veins. In his office, Lawrence amuses himself by imagining that by now the rich family is lost in the middle of the ocean and is planning to move into a larger room. After flying the plane for several hours, Richard asks Regina, his co-pilot, to take over while he gets a cup of coffee. The woman soon suspects that her husband intends to eat the chocolates they are taking to the queen and forbids him to do so. However, Richard claims that he does not intend to cheat his diet and pretends to drink coffee when in fact he is using the Smellmaster to track down the box of chocolate. At that moment, the device detects the odor of trinitrotoluene in one of the packages and Richard decides to ask Regina what is inside. Upon hearing the name of the chemical, the woman soon realizes that it is a bomb and orders her husband to get rid of it. Immediately, Richard throws the bomb out the window and the object explodes when it collides with the back of the plane. Due to the damage, the aircraft begins to crash and the couple despairs. Before news of the accident even breaks, Lawrence takes his place in Richard's office and pops some champagne to celebrate his rise to office. After saying goodbye to his new friends, Rich receives the sad news that his parents' plane has disappeared. Quickly, the boy runs to his room and uses the computer's GPS to try to locate his father. However, even after a long search, no signal can be traced. When the news breaks, Ferguson pays Lawrence a visit at his new office and informs him that there has been a slight problem with his plan. Richie was not on the plane, so he will become the legal heir to all the family's property. 
When Lawrence hears this, he is furious, but says that he will soon be able to get rid of the boy, just as he did with his parents. A sea search has been initiated, but so far the whereabouts of the billionaires remain unknown. Nevertheless, Richie is sure that his parents are alive. Fortunately, the boy is right, as the couple managed to save themselves using a lifeboat and is waiting to be rescued. Richard tries to fix the device he uses to communicate with his son, because he believes that this way Richie will be able to find them. With the crash, the device stopped working and, while trying to contain her despair, Regina comes to the conclusion that the only person capable of putting that bomb on the plane is Lawrence. The woman claims that Richard should have fired him several years ago, but the man who has never fired any of his employees says he doesn't intend to start doing that now. The couple's biggest concern is to be able to warn Richie that his life is in danger, since the person who planted that bomb on the plane believed that the boy would also be inside. Lawrence's first decision as the new president of Industrias Rich is to close United Tool. Desperate that his mother has lost her job, Gloria decides to warn Richie about what has happened, and the boy decides to claim his right as heir to his father's company and says that he will take over as president until his parents return. Now that he is in charge, the boy reopens the factory and prevents Lawrence from firing any employees. A few days after the boy takes over, Gloria and her friends decide to go to the office to thank the boy for reopening the factory. While trying to get some gum, Pee Wee destroys the machine and causes a great deal of damage. The youngsters then take advantage of the distraction to break into their friend's office, and Richie is very happy to see them. Gradually, the boy wins his space and gets the support of the most important members of the company, which makes Lawrence furious. The man orders Ferguson to put the plan they have devised into action and, this time, to be careful that nothing unforeseen happens. Hours later, a group of police officers storm the meeting room and announce that Herbert is under arrest, being accused of placing a bomb on Mr. and Mrs. Rich's plane. After this, Lawrence files an application to the Supreme Court to get custody of the boy, which previously belonged to Herbert. Now that he is back in power, the man fires all the employees who worked at the Rich family mansion under the pretext that he believes Herbert had accomplices. With new employees of his trust working in the house, Lawrence orders security cameras to be installed everywhere, including in Richie's room. Feeling like a prisoner in his own home, the boy decides to have a conversation with Lawrence who, at that very moment, is playing pool while asking Ferguson the location of the Rich family safe. However, the security guard claims never to have had access to this information. In his laboratory, Professor Keenbean uses one of the devices he designed to listen to the conversation and discovers the whole truth. The scientist even hears Ferguson's plan to get rid of Herbert in jail and even hint that the butler took his own life because of guilt. Desperate, Keenbean goes after Richie Rich and tells him everything. Together they hatch a plan to save the butler, and the scientist has the idea of using the acid he has created to destroy the prison bars. Richie then dresses up, for the first time in his life, like a normal boy and goes to the prison to deliver some items to Herbert, who he claims is his uncle. After checking that there are only hygiene items inside the bag, along with a note written in Latin, the policeman releases the package. Later, when the butler goes to the bathroom, he is surprised to find that the toothpaste has destroyed his toothbrush and decides to read the note. At that moment, he discovers that the product is to be used to destroy the bars. However, before he can escape, a thug enters the bathroom and tries to hang him with a towel. Herbert cries out for help, but no one comes to his aid. They exchange a few blows, and surprisingly, the butler manages to defeat his opponent. When the man leaves the prison, Richie is waiting for him outside and can barely recognize him in those clothes. The young man then shows a newspaper article that says that the wreckage of the plane has been found, but the bodies of his parents were not there. This further confirms the boy's belief that his parents are alive. The pair walk to Diane and Gloria's house and ask permission to use the girl's computer. Meanwhile, Richard continues to try to fix the communicator, but is unsuccessful. The man then comes up with the idea of using Regina's earring to replace the missing piece and manages to get the device working. After accessing Gloria's notebook, Richie uses some codes to connect to her computer's GPS. Quickly, one of the security guards realizes what is happening and warns Ferguson. Determined to discover the location of the Rich family vault, Lawrence decides to try to extract information from Professor Keenbean. However, both are interrupted with the news that Rich is using his computer to try to locate his parents. The device manages to locate Richard and takes a few minutes to report the exact coordinates. In the meantime, Ferguson manages to get to the room and removes the modem from the computer, causing Richie to be disconnected. Therefore, the boy needs the help of his friends to break into the mansion and get to his room. Meanwhile, in the lifeboat, Richard and Regina receive a nice surprise when they are rescued by a helicopter that they believe was sent by their son. It is already night when Richie breaks into the garden of his own house and gives the signal for his friends to attack the watchman. 
The group then manages to get into the mansion and goes straight to the laboratory, where they find Keenbean. After freeing the scientist, Richie asks for his help to distract the guards while he and Herbert try to get to his room. Together with Gloria, the professor creates a distraction for the security guards by throwing a mixture into the water tank that supplies the garden. Suddenly, several bubbles start popping up in the fountain, and while the employees get together to solve that problem, Pee Wee and the other kids turn off the security cameras. Just then, Richie and Herbert run into the bedroom while the other children run out of the mansion. However, upon checking the computer, the boy is confused, as the GPS states that his parents are at the mansion. To their surprise, Lawrence is already in the room waiting for them and Richie is distraught to see his parents tied up in bed. Outside, one of the security guards manages to capture the rest of the group, and Ferguson orders the man to take them to the lab. When asked why he is doing all this, Lawrence orders Richard to reveal the location of the vault and discovers that his most precious possessions are stored on the mountain next door. The demented man orders the couple to take him there and leaves Richie with Ferguson, to ensure that Richard will not try to trick him. While collecting his best inventions in a bag, Keenbean realizes that his laboratory is being invaded and manages to hide. The security guards then trap Richie's allies in the subatomic molecular reorganizer and turn on the machine. At this point, the professor needs to create a trap to trap the guards and save his allies. After using the world's strongest adhesive to immobilize his enemies, the scientist gets stuck in his own trap and uses the robot bee to nudge Ferguson to stop the machine. As soon as he can free himself, Richie takes the bag of inventions and runs to the vault in order to save his parents. By this time, Lawrence has reached his destination and orders the couple to unlock the door. To do this, they must sing a song, allowing the security system to identify their voices. When he finally manages to get into the safe, Lawrence realizes that there is nothing of value inside, and Richard states that those are the items of greatest emotional value to his family, as there are all the memories that the couple has built together with their son. His partner then asks where all the money is and Richard says that his assets are allocated in real estate, in the bank, and in his company's shares. Furious, Lawrence orders his henchmen to eliminate the couple, and Richie appears with his sword to stop him. At this point, the demented man fires a few shots at him, but nothing happens. After all, the boy used the bulletproof spray before entering the vault. Willing to risk their lives to save their son, the couple decide to act and manage to take down Lawrence and his security guard. They then escape from the vault and Richard has the idea of locking his enemies inside. However, Lawrence narrowly manages to escape and pursues the family. The trio must escape through the ear of one of the statues and end up being spotted by Ferguson, who uses the laser beam to try to eliminate them. Lawrence appears soon after and tries to shoot them, but is also hampered by the attacks of if incompetent security guard. Just when all seem to be lost for the rich family, Herbert shows up and attacks Ferguson. They exchange a few punches and the man manages to use the laser again to destroy the statues. Regina is about to fall when Richard gets the idea to swing her straight into the mouth of his statue. The man then helps his son down, but Ferguson remains determined to make life difficult for the family. After defeating Herbert, the security guard begins to destroy the statues and is only stopped when the butler breaks a sculpture over his head. He then takes control of the laser and attacks Lawrence, who ends up hanging by a rope upside down. At this moment, Richard makes an exception and fires his partner. And, to close with a golden key, Regina punches him in the face. A few months have passed and the friendship between Richie and the boys he met on the baseball field continues. Now they play together as a team, working in the garden close by are Lawrence and his faithful friend, who perform community service in the moments they are out of prison. While Richie and his friends celebrate their victory, Herbert plucks up the courage to kiss Diane and the two begin a relationship. Seeing their son happy alongside other children, Richard and Regina realize that only now is he the richest boy in the world, because he has one real friends. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.